In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. Instead, someone has testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor subjecting all things under his feet. In subjecting all things to him, he left nothing not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see all things subject to him, but we do see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. He who for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. You have given your Son rule over the works of your hands. You have given your Son rule over the works of your hands. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. 
You have given your Son rule over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the sea. You have given your Son rule over the works of your hands. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of man, but as it truly is the word of God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to Capernaum with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. I want to touch on two things today. One, on our Lord speaking with authority and what that means and the significance of it and how our Lord carries himself. And two, about him casting out demons. And in this case, the authority which he does it and the significance of that, casting out sins, sin from our lives. So first, the Lord speaking with authority. He is God. He's divine. He has no qualms about speaking as such and with that divine authority. Sometimes you might hear said, oh, but it never says in the Bible explicitly Jesus is God. Which, at which point, question that strongly because of several points in the Bible, in the scripture, makes it abundantly clear the word was with God, the word was God, for example. And when we see Philippians, him, and things like that, very clearly points putting him in the level of the divine. But that aside, which very clearly does blatantly say he's divine, our Lord doesn't need to outright go around telling everyone who has ears to hear that he is God. If Game of Thrones taught me anything, no man who needs to say, I am king, is really king. So he is very clear in his authority by speaking with authority, with divine authority, and outright saying things that only God can say. Your sins are forgiven. Only God can forgive sins. You made a divine offense. You offended God. You can't speak on his behalf, forgiving the sin. So he does. He speaks it blatantly. When the priests were here in confession before Mass, they did say, I absolve you of your sins, but not with their authority. What did they go on to say? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Because we don't have the authority. Christ is working through us in persona Christi. But our Lord can outright say that because he's God. He doesn't need to clarify. He is divine, so he speaks with divine power. 
When our Lord does other things, be they miracles or be they speaking and interpreting the Old Testament and the law. A lot of times the Israelites question that. How can you say that? How can you speak on the name with more authority than Moses? doesn't need to clarify. He's God. Before Abraham was, I am. What's the question about that? So this is the point that they're so confused about. Who is this man speaking with authority? Not just human authority. Who is this man speaking with the divine authority? And of course, they're going to go on to know. They're going to go on to realize, as the apostles do, especially later on, even they don't get it yet at this moment, is that he is God. God made man. As the church will struggle with that for a couple of centuries, of course, with everything, what does this mean? How did this happen? Of course, he is God made man, no doubt about that, and he speaks as such. So that's the first thing. Second thing, well, let me focus a bit more on this. Casting out demons, be it in this case, casting out in the form of exorcism, which of course is what our Lord's doing casting out the demons from the place, from the area, so that they can have no power when he casts out demons uh, from the people that are uh, possessed, etc., etc. But also ripping out Satan from our lives. The Feast of the Salamni, the Holy Family, preached on why do we make it easy for Satan with our households? We say, as we know, as in the words of great St. John Paul II, right, and this has always been taught in the church, make of your home a domestic church. A lot of times we make it very easy for Satan to have his nest in our homes and to be present there and to work in there. And the examples I gave, and I would hope it's not a problem here, but if it is, as for those at home, this is an obvious one, which is, of course, uh, living in sin and not being, just being married civilly. Right? That's an obvious one. I don't think I need to clarify that one. If you're not married in the church and you're cohabitating, obviously you're living in sin. But there are other ones that might be a bit more either subtle or overt to make it so easy for Satan to work in our homes. And we need to rip that out. Be they, for example, temptations to infidelity. Be they certain addictions. Or be they things that we know that eventually lead us astray. To better off, rip them out of our homes. Rip them out of our families. See a couple of couples. Maybe you're married. Those that are already married. What are these things? Is there a temptation, be it some co-worker or someone, that's leading me astray, that might be tempting me away from and endangering my marriage? Rip it out. Let our Lord exorcise that from your household, from your family, from your life entirely. Is there maybe something in your life that you know is that pet sin that eventually is going to ruin me somewhere down the road, but I really like it and I like having it around? I like having it around in my house. I like having it around in my marriage. But I know this comes from the enemy. Rip it out. Exercise it from your life. Contraceptives is obviously another one that poisons the marriage. Cast that out from our lives. Don't make it easy for Satan. So our Lord, quite often, it's one of his favorite things to do, cast out demons. And there's something I learned I have my witnesses here because we studied in the seminary together. There's something I learned about exorcisms. They don't work unless the person who's possessed gives permission for it to work. It's the only way that it could work. If you like having Satan around, if you like having Satan possess you, if you like having Satan polluting your life, there's nothing we can do for you. There's nothing our Lord can do for you. But if the moments that we want him cast out the moment we want him exercised, the moment we want to rip out those things from our lives that are endangering our marriage, endangering our household, endangering my eternal salvation, that's when our Lord has power. That's when his authority can become effective and he can actually cast that out from your life. So let us in this Mass, at least for this moment, turn over to the Lord, hand ourselves over to him, say, Lord, help me cast this out from my life. And in that way, finally, he can start working. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.
As Jesus invites us to follow him, we turn our hearts and minds to the Father and present our petitions before him. For those in the church entrusted with the spiritual care of others, may God grant them wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God continue to convert their hearts to the beauty of peace and justice for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in mind and body or spirit, may the loving hand of Jesus provide consolation even amidst continued hardship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may God's grace help us as we respond to Jesus' call to participate in building the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of faith, may the mercy of our loving Father usher them into the fullness of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, Thank you for listening to our prayers as you do each day. Hear and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice in you is be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the greatest and glory of the name, for our good and good all of May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that I may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. 
Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them holy. Never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graces to make holy these gifts, we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks to the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, Lord, as you celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, now, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death he will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, become one body, spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Augustine, Saint Anne, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There I hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we've on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Gracious, you grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. So I offer you the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
us pray. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lies pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few quick um, announcements and words of thanks, of course. Begin by saying Happy New Year to everyone. This is our first Mass for 2021. We thank Father Elvin. Uh, always a pleasure to have a uh, friend and neighbor from St. Anne's here with us this evening for Mass. Thank you for your words and for getting us started on the right foot this evening. Speaking of that, as soon as this Mass is concluded, for those who are here with us in church, if you go down to the parish hall, there'll be a brief reception for those who are able to join us. We'd be happy to have you there for a few moments just to say hello to one another and maybe wish each other a happy new year in person. And finally, a reminder that this Mass resumes again on the second Tuesday of every month. Next Tuesday, next month rather, February 9th, we will be pleased to have Bishop Colachico here as the celebrant and homilist for the Young Adult Mass. So bring a friend with you for that one. It'll be his first time here at St. Augustine's and we're always happy to have one of our auxiliaries join us for this Mass. So again, thanks to everyone who helped to make this possible. Father Elvin, once again, on behalf of everyone here at St. Augustine's, welcome and thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit listen upon you remain with you always. Go forth, the Mass is ended.